Alright. Good morning guys. We got I got Mamie's donuts, the best You're not getting any. You're not getting any. The best donuts in Pennsylvania. I got Almond Joy. It's just a regular donut with chocolate and coconut filling. Holy Cheers. You're here back home in central PA. Pretty pretty decent view, I'd say. It's beautiful here. Great morning. It's a little humid, but that's PA for you. So today, I am going to be going into Williamsburg. We're going to be shooting some small town photography again. It's not going to be POV. I'm not going to be editing anything. Just want to show you guys a couple of the photos that I make from my hometown. But after that, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we will see. into the woods around my place um, so what I want to talk about today is my favorite styles of photography now I know what you guys are thinking you either take pictures of people or you take pictures of landscape there's a lot more than that but I will get into that after we go take some dope pictures y'all we are back in my apartment pretty good weekend at home uh, went out and shot the photography that you guys saw didn't really do too much else I was hoping to get that hiking done but it ended up thunderstorming and just pouring down rain so that ended up not happening so like I said before we're gonna talk about my photography styles that I like that I don't really like or that I might get into in the future so let's hop into the computer so the first one that I want to talk about is car photography so as you can see here, he has a Lamborghini right there. It's, that's not his, but he partners with Lamborghini like Melbourne and uh, Sydney. So he is pretty good with car photography. I mean, look at some of these shots. Just insane, high quality, great colors. You can tell he's been doing this for a while. So what I really like about this style is you can see the uniqueness and the personality of each car as long as you can capture it correctly. Now you have to be careful with car photography because you have to be as true to the real life colors as possible. It's not like you're going out and shooting a sunset and it's not as saturated or it's not, it's not as nice as you'd like. So you can super saturate it and change the colors wildly in Photoshop. You have to get everything just right but while still making it look good. So I would like to do some more car photography but to be able to do that is I have to take pictures of cars when I can. Develop a, develop a portfolio of it, go out to people, show them my pictures, say, hey, I'll shoot your car for free. Just let me use it on my Instagram, on my YouTube, whatever. And from there, I might actually be able to start partnering with car dealerships in the future just to take some, even if they're just like Honda Accords or something, taking pictures on the lot, just building up and up and up and up. Everything's a ladder. You have to start somewhere. This is what you would consider street photography. So what street photography really should be is you're going out and capturing the essence of the city and you can't capture what the city is without the people who live there. So as you can see here, it's a nice rainy night. He has a Sony A7R Mark IV or something. Insane resolution, amazing night. Like hardly any noise if you shoot at night at high ISOs. The rainy, like the weather ceiling capabilities of it is insane. So if you're looking here, see all these people that he's capturing it's you're capturing them without them knowing that you're taking a picture of it to actually get a feel for you know what that night is like kind of the flow and the feeling of the city so what's really cool about street photography is that, like look at that picture 
it's almost like photojournalism where you're capturing what people are doing in the moment. You, if you do it correctly, you feel like you're a part of the scene and you feel like you know that you've been living in the city for a while. And this is one where you can mess with the colors, the look, anything like that. You can mess with it a bit more because you're trying to make the city feel how you think it feels that night. So if it's feeling depressing or um, it's hazy or muggy or anything like that, you can change the colors. You can change the colors of the shadows, the colors of the highlights. You can change the white balance to make it a little more on the blue side, cooler, to make it feel more, you know, slow, drummed down, a little, what's the word? I, I don't want to say tepid, but almost stagnant, I guess, if it's a very slow day in the city. So you can do a lot with these pictures so you actually understand the city. So up next is my absolute favorite photographer. His name is Evan Ramp. I shouted him out on this channel before. And while a lot of these other videos inspired me to do photography, little backstory, I always liked photography and seeing the pictures in books and magazines and saying, yeah, that's really cool how they captured that. During quarantine of COVID last year when we all had to be locked down, I started watching YouTube and this guy really inspired me to pick up a camera. So this right here is what I would call travel photography. So he's on a trip, he's exploring, he's going to new places or somewhere he's been before. And look, it started downpouring on him. He has his lights on, you can see with the fog and the haze just shining through. This photo is just clean. It communicates the feeling that you want. Mostly I wanna talk about how the fact that this travel photography shows that he's on a trip and that he's experiencing new things. Travel photography is cool because it gives you the opportunity to go explore new places. And you're gonna, if you go on a trip with your family, you might have your phone or one of those, you know, point and shoot, you zoom in and the lens is attached to the body already. But you can go a step further with travel photography and really make some interesting photos. So that way you can remember your trip even better. That's why I enjoy taking photos on Georgia. I believe if it's right, it should be right here. I don't know if it is, click on that video if you guys haven't seen that yet. It is one of my favorites. Product photography is a difficult thing to get into. So he, Evan Ramped, so same guy, he used to do product photography for a shoe company called Epitome ATL. So what he would do is he would go to, he went to a store, they reached out to him I believe, and he shot shoes for them for like five, six years until coronavirus hit and he lost that gig. But you're able to show the product, you're able to get close up images, you're able to do this, that, and the other thing. Product photography is kind of like car photography where you have to get the colors extremely, you have to get the colors just right. You have to be very careful when you're doing it. You have to have them very succinct. You have to make very small changes because it has to represent exactly what the product looks like. If you don't, then you're misrepresenting what it is and you're gonna disappoint the customer. It's not gonna look right. You're not gonna remember what those super nice Air Jordans, those J's that you just bought. So I, out of all of these uh, styles, I think the one that I enjoy the most right now is street photography. So whether that's, well, street photography and city photography. Now they're two slightly different distinctions because you can do street photography in a small town, which I did, or you can do city photography where you're going and capturing, you know, the buildings or the roads or anything like that. Now they can merge, like I said, but they're typically, it's like a Venn diagram, right? You have these two, they overlap, but each one has a very specific aspect that sets it apart from each other. So I think my favorite right now is city photography, and I'm trying to get more into street photography, taking pictures of people going about their day, you know, people eating at a really cool place in a, say in Pittsburgh, they're eating at, I forget what it is, if they're eating at like a taco place or they're in a cafe, just capturing people going about their daily lives and being able to share that on YouTube or through Instagram. It takes, I admire street photographers because it takes a lot of guts to be able to capture, typically it's a wide angle lens. So from a wide angle lens, you have to be like this close and they see you taking a picture of them and sometimes people get upset, they get mad, they get uncomfortable and sometimes the photographer themselves get, set themselves gets uncomfortable. As such, it's a little difficult to do, and even after you're comfortable doing that, you have to make sure that you get the framing right. The focus is very important because if it's behind, say it was focusing on the curtains right now and not my face, and we were on the street, and you got a picture of the curtains where it was, you got a picture of me, but the focus was on the curtains, that'd be a bit pretty crappy street photo. So you have to get the focus just right on it, and I really admire those who can do it.
But like I said, my favorite right now is probably city photography, uh, cityscapes, getting photos of the buildings, the roads. But photography is a journey, and in a year, who knows what my favorite will be. After that, really, I already said, like the channel. I don't want you liking the video if you haven't watched this far, because if you haven't watched this far, you probably didn't like the video. But until the next time, guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you hear when my next photo, yeah, next photo, yeah, whatever. Hit the bell. Insta pages are right here and here and comment down below what you'd like to see next. So until then, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.